never give up. I didn't get into Brown University. It was on the wait list. I called him up, and they eventually decided that it was getting really annoying to have me call every day, so they let me in. Um, at Carnegie Mellon, I didn't get into graduate school. Andy had mentored me. He said, go to graduate school. You're going to go to Carnegie Mellon. All my good students go to Carnegie Mellon. And uh, yeah, you know what's coming. Uh, and so he said, you're going to go to Carnegie Mellon, no problem. What he had kind of forgotten was that the difficulty of getting into the top PhD program in the country had really gone up. And he also didn't know I was going to tank my GREs because <laughs> he believed in me, which based on my board scores was a really stupid idea. <laughs> And uh, so I didn't get into Carnegie Mellon. No one knows this till today I'm telling the story. I was declined admission to Carnegie Mellon. And uh, I, I was a bit of an obnoxious little kid. I went into Andy's office, and I dropped the rejection letter on his desk. And I said, I just want you to know what your letter of recommendation goes for at Carnegie Mellon. <laughs> And before the letter had hit his desk, his hand was on the phone, and he said, I will fix this. <laughs> and I said, no, 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 I don't want to do it that way. That's not the way I was raised. You know, maybe some other graduate schools will see fit to admit me. <laughs> and he said, look, Carnegie Mellon's where you're going to be. He said, I tell you what, I'll make you a deal. Go visit the other schools, because I did get into all the other schools. He said, go visit the other schools. And if you really don't feel comfortable at any of them, then will, let you, will you let me call Nico? Nico being Nico Haberman. And I said, OK, deal. I went to the other schools without naming them by name. <coughs> Berkeley, Cornell. Uh, <laughs> they managed to be so unwelcoming that I found myself saying to Andy, you know, I'm going to go get a job. And he said, no, you're not. And he picked up the phone, and he talked in Dutch. <laughs> and he hung up the phone, and he said, Nico says if you're serious, be in his office tomorrow morning at 8 AM. And for those of you who know Nico, <laughs> this is really scary. <laughs> so I'm in Nico Hopperman's office the next morning at 8 AM. And he's talking with me. And frankly, I don't think he's that keen on this meeting. <laughs> I don't think he's that keen at all. And he says, um, Randy, uh, why are we here? And um, I said, because Andy phoned you? <laughs> And I said, well, since you admitted me, I have won a fellowship. The Office of Naval, Office of Naval Research is a very prestigious fellowship. I've won this fellowship, and that wasn't in my file when I applied. And Nico said, a, a fellowship, money, we have plenty of money. That was back then. <laughs> uh, and he said, we have plenty of money. Why do you think having a fellowship makes any difference to us? And he looked at me. There are moments that change your life. And 10 years later, if you know, in retrospect, it was one of those moments, you're blessed. But to know it at the moment, with Nico staring through your soul. <laughs> and I said, I didn't mean to imply anything about the money. It's just that it was an honor. There were only 15 given nationwide. And I did think it was an honor that would be something that would be meritorious. And I apologize if that was presumptuous. And he smiled. <laughs> And that was good. So how do you get people to help you? You can't get there alone. People have to help you. And I do believe in karma. I believe in paybacks. You get people to help you by telling the truth, being earnest. I'll take an earnest person over a hip person every day, because hip is short term. Earnest is long term. Apologize when you screw up. And focus on other people, not on yourself. And I thought, how do I possibly make a concrete example of that? Do we have a concrete example of focusing on somebody else over there? Can we bring it out? See, yesterday was my wife's birthday. If there was ever a time I might be entitled to have the focus on me, it might be the last lecture. But no, I feel very badly that my wife didn't really get a proper birthday. And I thought it'd be very nice if 500 people Happy birthday to you. Her name is Jay. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Jay. Happy birthday to you. You gotta blow it up.
All right. And now you all have an extra reason to come to the reception. <laughs> Remember brick walls let us show our dedication. They are there to separate us from the people who don't really want to achieve their childhood dreams. Don't bail. The best of the gold is at the bottom of barrels of crap. <laughs> what, Steve, <laughs> what Steve didn't tell you was the big sabbatical at EA. I'd been there for 48 hours, and they, they loved the ETC. We were the best. We were the favorites. And then uh, somebody else pulled me aside and said, oh, by the way, um, we're about to give $8 million to USC to build a program just like yours. We're hoping you can help them get it off the ground. <laughs> And then Steve came along and said, they said, what? Oh, God. <laughs> and, and to quote a famous man, I will fix this. <laughs> and he did. Steve has been an incredible partner, and we have a great relationship, personal and professional. Uh, and he has certainly been point man on, on getting a gaming asset to help teach millions of kids. And, uh, you know, that's just incredible. But, uh, you know, it certainly would have been reasonable for me to leave 48 hours into that sabbatical but it wouldn't have been the right thing to do. And when you do the right thing, good stuff has a way of happening. Uh, get a feedback loop and listen to it. Your feedback loop can be this dorky spreadsheet thing I did, or it can just be one great man who tells you what you need to hear. The hard part is the listening to it. Anybody can get chewed out. Right? It's the rare person who says, oh my god, you're right, as opposed to, no, wait, the real reason is, right? we've all heard that. When people give you feedback, cherish it and use it. Show gratitude. When I got tenure, I took all of my research team down to Disney World for a week. And one of the other professors at Virginia said, how can you do that? I said, these people just busted their ass and got me the best job in the world for life. How could I not do that? Right? Uh, don't complain, just work harder. Right? It's a picture of Jackie Robinson. It was in his contract not to complain, even when the fans spit on him. Right? Uh, be good at something, it makes you valuable. Work hard. People, I got tenure a year early, as Steve mentioned. Junior faculty members used to say to me, wow, you got tenure early, what's your secret? I said, it's pretty simple, call me any Friday night in my office at 10 o'clock and I'll tell you. <laughs> Find the best in everybody. One of the things that John Snotty, as I said, told me is that uh, you might have to wait a long time, sometimes years, but people will show you their good side. Just keep waiting, no matter how long it takes. No one is all evil. Everybody has a good side. Just keep waiting. It will come out. And be prepared. Luck is truly where preparation meets opportunity. So today's talk was about my childhood dreams, enabling the dreams of others, and some lessons learned. 